All right, guys, let's talk about the things we went over in class on Monday. On Monday, we started with um, we the rest of uh, section 1.1. 1. 1, we started with section 2 in that, in that particular chapter, um, and we just finished 1.1 1. 1 on Monday. Uh, so starting with section 2 on page 85, if you happen to be following along with me today, um, it says to identify conditional equations, identities, and contradictions. Uh, in these types of equations, these are linear equations, just like the ones we talked about in the first section. Um, however, sometimes they don't just work out where it comes out to be an answer. And so in class, I went over A, B, and C uh, that are there on page 85. And so just to refresh our memory on those and how those worked, I'm going to go through and do that again and just explain them as I, as I walk you through them here. So question A says uh, three, well, I don't even know what that is. Sorry. Okay. Let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Three times 2x minus 1 and then is equal to 2 times 3x minus 2. So it looks pretty good. We've got uh, a linear equation just like we saw in the first section. So we're going to treat it just like we normally would. We're going to go ahead and first apply the distributive property to remove those parentheses. So I'm going to distribute this 3. So I'm going to multiply 3 times 2x and 3 times negative 1. So 3 times 2x is 6x. And 3 times negative 1 we know is negative 3. I'm going to set that equal to the question over on the other side. And we've got to distribute that, so 2 times 3x and 2 times negative 2. So when I distribute that, I've got 2 times 3x, which is 6x, and then 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So now I need to go ahead and just get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. That's my next step here. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I get x by itself. So I'm going to subtract x from this side and then go ahead and do the same thing over on the other side. Cancels my x is my 6x over here, but it also is going to do the same thing over here since it's the same number. So therefore, I've actually eliminated my x's, and I'm down to negative 3 is equal to negative 4, which we know is actually not a true statement, and there's really no way to solve that any further. It just gives us one number equal to another, and it's not. So this is what's called a contradiction, because it one side contradicts the other. Negative 4 is not equal to negative 3. So this was just called a contradiction. So on your um, uh, Alex homework, the question is set up to, to, you know, to where it asks either that, you know, it says either check the box that says no solution. So no solution. I'll just write that out real quickly. Check the box that says x is equal to, and then you fill that out. Or you're going to check the box that says all real numbers. So I'm just going to abbreviate that to all, and then capital R there, for all real numbers. Uh, and I'll show you what that means. So in this case, this is actually a no solution. It's a contradiction, so um, the answer to this, there, there wouldn't be a particular answer to this. It's just, um, it doesn't work. So uh, if you happen to solve that linear equation and, and on your Alex homework and on next week's quiz, if you just get a... You know, something like this, I'm going to have you do something like you ha had to do on your Alex homework. You just have to either check no solution, um, x is equal to something, and then solve it, or all real numbers. And let me show you the other ones to show you where those answers would come in. But that's why that's called a contradiction. To think about that, again, that one side contradicts the other. Whereas question B in this section says this. Again, another linear equation. We've got three times 2x minus 1, the same way the other problem started, is equal to, and then I have 2 times 3x uh, minus 2. This time we've added a plus 1 here on the end, which is fine. I mean, it looks just like a normal linear equation that we've had before. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and apply that the way that we apply our linear equations. I'm going to go ahead and distribute and get rid of those parentheses. So two times, I mean, three times two x is six x. Three times negative one is negative three. Over on the other side, I'm going to distribute that two. Two times three x is six x. And then two times negative two is negative four. 
Then again, I haven't done anything with that plus one, so it's still there as well. So the difference here is now on the right side of our equal sign, I've got two like terms I want to go ahead and put together. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that before I do anything. And it says negative four plus positive one, which we know is negative three. So when I go to write out what I'm left with, I have six x minus three is equal to six x minus three. So, so far, if you're looking at this, you might be able to tell where this is going. Um, they're the same on both sides. Even if I were to continue this and go ahead and to apply, you know, go ahead and finish it the way that I know how, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the x on one side by subtracting 6x. So that's going to get rid of that over here. But i got to do the same thing on the other side of my equal sign. And since it's the same number, it actually does the same thing. So I'm left with just negative 3 is equal to negative 3. So same thing, even if I were to go and you know add 3 to both sides just to equal it out, on both sides, if I did that, I'm going to end up with 0 is equal to 0 because they're the same. When you get an answer that says 0 is equal to 0, this is actually called an identity. And the way that I think about it is, you know, it's an identity that the same number is on either side, so you're seeing the same identity. Um, like it's like looking into a mirror. On one side of the equal sign, we have one thing and one thing on the, the same thing on the other. So that's why I think about that as an identity. So the answer to this, if we're following along to what the Alex homework does, we'll remember it was either no solution, uh, x is equal to something, or then all real numbers. The answer here is all real numbers, that really x could be anything as because it's going to be the same on either side. Again, if we go back to where it says 6x minus 3 is equal to 6x minus 3, where we were, let me just get this out of the way to show you guys what I mean by that. If we go back to where it says 6x minus 3 is equal to 6x minus 3, even when, if we, are, we were to replace x with some number, any number, any number at all would work if I replaced it with, say, 2. Say that was 2. Then we have 6 times 2 is 12, minus 3 uh, is 9. So then I'd do the same thing on the other side. 6 times x is 2. So, or 6 times 2 is 12, minus 3 is 9. So I'm left with 9 is equal to 9. Uh, it, it just works on either side. No matter what x equals to, the number is always going to come out to be the same. So x could be anything. So the answer is all real numbers. No matter what you have substituted there as x, it comes out to where that statement would be a true statement, that that number is equal to that number on the other side. So x is all real numbers in an identity. So when you get something like that. The last linear equation that we had there on page 85 in question C just in showing you guys that one, this one we have 3 times 2x minus 1 again. And over on the other side we have is equal to 5x minus 4. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute there on the left um, so that we can get rid of the parentheses over there. And as usual, just as we did in the first two, we get 6x minus 3. And then that's equal to 5x minus 4 on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and solve it the rest of the way. So I'm going to get rid of x over here on the right side. And then I'm going to make sure that I do the same thing over on the other side. Cancels out over here. What that's going to do over here on the left, 6 minus 5 is 1. So I'm just left with x on this side. And then I still have my number, six. I mean x minus 3 is equal to negative 4. Um, so now I just have x on one side of the equal sign, so I've just now got to get rid of the 3 that's over there with x so that my statement can say x is equal to something. And so I'm going to go ahead and add 3 to both sides. And that's going to leave me with x since my 3's will cancel out over here. And then I'm left with over here on the other side negative 4 plus 3 we know is negative 1. So it comes out to an answer. And so this, in this particular answer, this is what's called a conditional equation where we actually do get a solution. And so, again, in your answer to this, you know, in the question like on your Alex homework where it, your, your answers were either no solution, x is equal to something, or um, all real numbers, in this case your answer is yes, x is equal to something, and you just had to fill that out as negative 1. So same thing's going to happen on your quiz next week. If you get something like this, you're just going to have to check that 
this is a conditional equation. That's what that check mark means that you're answering it that way. Um, and then that there is a solution. So you have to fill out and tell me what that solution is. Um, so that's what those are. We, we simply were just solving the linear equations the way that we knew how, as we've done that a number of times in the previous week. Um, but just whatever, whenever you get uh, to the end of your linear equation and you get two numbers on opposite sides where your x's have canceled out and you get two numbers that don't equal out, you know, if you get 8 is equal to 9, then this is, this is called a contradiction. It con one side contradicts the other, so that's where the answer is no solution. Whereas if you get to the end of your equation and you get 0 is equal to 0, where you get the same number on either side, in that case, your answer, remember, is all real numbers. And then finally, if you get to the end and you actually get, you know, to find that x is equal to some number, then in that case, that is a conditional equation, just like the, you know, the linear equations we looked at on your quiz last week, that there is an answer, so you simply just have to tell me what your answer is. These were a little bit different, these two right here, but that's the only thing we're looking for, is if you get two numbers at the end where your x's cancel out, remember that, contradiction or no solution, I mean, or all real numbers uh, in an identity. So that was what we looked at in section two. So you'll see a couple of those examples on next week's quiz. In section three, we looked at what's called a rational equation. Now, the only thing we focused on on the rational equations were kind of like uh, example five at the bottom of page 86. In this type of, of equation, you know, what we looked at very similar to what we saw in uh, on last week's quiz where we had fractions. I want to just jog our memory on what we did with fractions whenever I have like one-fourth x minus, uh, let's say, 5 over 2 is equal to 6, let's say. So when we have fractions in a linear equation, the idea is to first get rid of these two bottom numbers, the 4 and the 2 in this example. So what we have to do is we have to find a multiple that both 4 and 2 can go into because that will allow me, in, in using that common multiple, that's going to allow me to cancel out those two numbers in order to get rid of them. So I'm, I'm no longer dealing with fractions. I'm just going to be dealing with whole numbers. Um, so in finding a common multiple, a couple of you guys on last week's quiz used factors instead. Factors are something they can both be divided by. So in this example, if you choose 2, that's a factor because both 4 and 2 can be divided by 2. And that works when we're reducing fractions. If I have, say, 2 fourths, both of these, when, when dividing those by 2, I, I reduce that to 1 over 2. 2 is a factor in this example because they can both be divided by that number. I'm looking for a multiple, meaning something that they can both go into. So multiples mean, you know, again, thinking of your multiplication tables, thinking about your multiples of both 4 and 2, these are numbers they can both go into. 4 times 1 is 4. That means 4 can go into 4 one time. 4 times 2 is 8, meaning 4 could go in 4 could go into 8 two times, whereas then 4 times 3 we know is, oops, different color marker here, 4 times 3 we know is 12, and, and so on. Multiples of 2 we know then would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, you know, counting by 2s, so 2 times 1, 2 times 2, uh, 2 times 3, 2 times 4. They're actually, 2 and 4 are definitely going to have a lot of different multiples in common. The very first one we find, though, is 4. That's going to be easier to use. You could use either one. I mean, you could use the 8. You could use, eventually, you'll see that they have 12 in common. They're going to have 16 in common. They're going to have a lot of them in common. You can use any of those. But it's going to be easier for you to use the 4 because it's always going to be easier to work with smaller numbers in dealing with these kind of, of numbers. Um, it, it's, it provides less work for you as you, as you go through the problem. So again, in this example, our least common multiple is 4. Um, so what that means is, what I'm going to do is I'll be able to multiply both sides of our equation by 4. Remember, whatever you do on one side of the equation, as long as you do the same thing to the other side, 
that's going to keep your answers equal. Um, you know, because again, in thinking about that, if I have just a silly example, if I have, uh, say, 4 is equal to 4, well, if I chose to multiply both sides by 7, you know, obviously then, yeah, I'm going to get the same answer on either side, so it still remains equal to one another. Whenever you do something to one side of the equation, as long as you do the same thing to the other, you're good. So, let me, uh, let me get this out of the way down here. So, again, if I multiply both sides of this equation up here by 4, it's going to still keep it equal, and I'm, I'm going to be able to still work with it. But it's going to make it a lot easier uh, in the end because it's going to allow me to remove those denominators, so I'm no longer dealing with fractions. So I'm first going to start by distributing the 4 you know, to the two parts of our term uh, and work with those one at a time. So I'm actually going to take 4 times 1 fourth x, and then that's subtraction. I keep the, the same operation sign in here and distribute it to the 5 over 2, so 4 times 5 over 2. Okay? And then over on the other side, I'll go ahead and distribute 6 times 4, we know is 24. So I'll just go ahead and solve that. Um, some people on last week's quiz forgot that you needed to multiply the other side of the equation and forgot this step over here. Don't forget, you've got to multiply both sides of that equal sign. Okay, so now that we have, you know, distributed that on that left side, working with that one at a time, when I have 4 times 1 fourth, these are considered reciprocals of one another. Um, it's going to help me to cancel that out. When you look at the technically 4, we have there 4 by itself is the same thing as the fraction 4 over 1. And when we're multiplying fractions, when you have opposite numerators and denominators, so meaning the you know, opposite top and bottom numbers that are the same, they pretty much cancel out. You can do what's called cross-reducing. And if they can both be divided by the same thing, you want to go ahead and do so. So we talked about this, actually, in the first section. And so 4 and 4 being the same number, they're going to just cancel out. But because they can, that's because they can both be divided by 4, and when we divide them both by 4, we just get 1. So we're simply left with x right here. Uh, whereas then on the, the next one, so as the next part of my equation over here, I have 4 times 5 over 2. Again, opposite numerator and denominator over here, 4 and 2. I'm going to actually reduce those because they can both be divided by 2. So what happens is 2 cancels out. The denominator always just cancels out. In this case, when we're dealing with numbers, it's going to be a little bit different here in a second. But 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that just becomes 1. But 4 divided by 2, you have to divide them by the same thing in order to keep it equal. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that's going to change things over here. That's going to leave me with when I distribute that, you know, in a, you know, I'll go ahead and do so. 2 times 5 is what I'm left with here. So that's going to leave me with 10 over on this side. The 1 had can't, I mean, the, the denominators are 1, so they cancel out. And then again, I'm left with is equal to 24. And so now I'm left with just this linear equation, and all I have to do is add 10 to both sides, and I'm left with then x is equal to 34. And that's my end answer, but that removal of the fractions helps me to solve that a whole lot simpler, a whole lot easier. And we can do that in rational equations too. The difference is what we're seeing is that rational equations in the denominator maybe didn't have just numbers in it. We may have seen rational or linear equations that have also variables in our fractions or denominators here. So for example, that, that example on the bottom page 86 says this. We have 12 over x is equal to 6 over 2x plus 3. So a very similar thing can happen. As long as I multiply both sides of my equation by um, my least common multiple, I'll be able to keep this equal, and it'll help me to eliminate um, those numbers down at the bottom. So what's going to be my common multiple when I have a variable down there? What happens is you want, when you're thinking about common multiples with variables, is you want a number that both of those can go into. So the way to think about that is our, our multiples, our, our denominators down here are x and 2x. 
multiples of x, if you think about it, whatever x is, it's some number. Again, taking that x and multiplying it by 1, by 2, by 3, and so on, would be, you know, since I don't know what x is, 1 times x is 1x, or x. 2 times x, we just call 2x. 3 times x, we would just call 3x, and so on and so forth. So therefore, a common multiple between, you know, between my x and my 2x, they're right there. So a common multiple, there it is, 2x. It would be a common multiple between these two numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by uh, 2x. So let me eliminate my fraction, I mean my multiplication down here. Let me get that out of the way. And again, I said we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2x. I'll show you guys what happens when we use 2x. Um, so let's go ahead and distribute where we can. So first over here on this side of the equal sign, there's only one term, so I'm just going to leave that as is, is equal to, and then I'll have 2x times the first term, which is 2, I mean, I'm sorry, 6 over 2x, plus, and I'll multiply 2x by that other term, can't forget to do so on that one, even though it's just 3 and it doesn't have a denominator, it still has to be, that 2x still has to be distributed to both parts of this uh, side, this this left or this right side of the equal sign here. So now what happens? Just like we did when we had our numbers, I'm going to, you know, try to eliminate those denominators. X and two x. When I'm trying to solve for that, what happens is x can be divided by x. Two x can also be divided by x, and that just leaves me with two. So x, you know, divided by x is one. 2x. So what happens is, if you think about it, your x's just cancel out in that right there. Since those two are the same, 2 remains. Over here on the next one, when we go to the other side of the equal sign, 2x and 2x are the same. So the whole thing cancels out and just leaves me with 6 in that one. And then over here, 2x times 3 is just going to be uh, 6x. So going ahead and, and distributing that and finishing, just to show you guys what that looks like, in that first one over on the left side of the equal sign, 2 times 12, we know is 24. And then over on the other side, we're just left with 6. The 2x's had canceled out. Plus 2x times 3 is 6x. So I'm left with this linear equation that no longer has any denominators in it, making it much easier to go ahead and solve. I'm going to go ahead, since I have x by itself on one side of the equal sign already, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides so that I can cancel out the 6 there. 24, uh, 24 minus 6 we know is, if I could get some room down here, let's see, is 18. Sorry if that's hard to see down there at the bottom, but it's 18. And then over on the other side, I'm left with 6x. And then so I know what I'll have to do is just divide by 6 on both sides, and that's going to leave me with x is equal to 3. Um, so that makes it just a whole lot simpler to go ahead and solve by using our common multiples. Just to do another one in the back, uh, in the review chapter, I want to show you guys another example with those uh, just to make sure we feel pretty comfortable with that. Um, let me see here. Let me get this all out of the way. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to grab one from the back, and I'm going to give you guys always one like that. So don't think that, you know, it's going to be... In the if you're looking through this section, we did uh, go through this in class. I did say don't worry about um, the example on page 87, the example six. That those got kind of complicated because when you have the denominator of x minus four, easily solved. But as we started doing it in class, we could easily solve it. But the problem was. We get to the end of those, and our answer is not going to work. Um, so I just skipped over it, and and I'll explain that later for those of you guys who weren't in class when I said our answer didn't work. If you look at example 6, with the denominator x minus 4, just to quickly explain that, with the denominator x minus 4, x can definitely not be 4. You know, that's not going to work because, you know, the reason why this is definitely not going to work is because if we substitute a 4 right there, 4 minus 4 is 0. And a denominator cannot be 0. If you're, it's, it's considered what, what's called undefined in, in math. Um, 
where you have a denominator of zero and a fraction. It's just, it just it wouldn't work. Um, so most of these that are in the book and the, one, the examples like this, it comes out that way, where X cannot be 3, but then the answer comes out to be 3. So it just says, the answer in the book just says, the value 3 does not check. You know, or if the denominator is X minus 5, 5 would not work, but sometimes the answer comes out to be 5, so we just have to say, well, the value 5 that comes out is not going to check. So that's just how we answered that. So instead, we just said, you know what, let's skip those, and let's only do the rational equations like that first example. So one like that example in that review section on page 93. On page 93, I'm going to just do number 50. We did number 49 in class, but number 50 is very similar. It says this. It says 1 over 3 minus 4 over 3t is equal to 7 over t. So three different denominators here. However, one of those denominators includes the other two which means it's a multiple of the other two. I say that because, you know, again, you guys are looking 3t right there, includes the number 3, which means it's a multiple of 3, and it includes t, which means it's a multiple of t. Because remember, that's what 3t stands for. 3t, uh, if, you, if you just think about this, 3t is really the same thing as saying 3 times t. So therefore, we know it's a multiple of 3 and a multiple of t if you just think about it that way. So getting that out of the way down here, I'm going to use 3t as my common multiple, which means I can multiply both sides of this equal sign by 3t. I can do that over here as well. And so, again, just distributing that, 3 to, that 3t to each part of, you know, to each term of that first section there, 3t times 1 third, I'll just write that right there, minus 3t times 4 over 3t. And then over on the other side, we have 3t times 7 over t. So going ahead and, and getting rid of those denominators, what happens with that first one that says 3t times 1 third? Pretty much just the 3s are going to cancel out. Makes it a lot easier as far as eliminating. You know, it, you just have to cancel out what's the same. So it's just going to leave me with t right there. Uh, the next term where it says 3t times 4 over 3t, 3t and 3t are the same, so the two of those cancel out. And then in the last one, 3t and t, again, your t's are just going to cancel out. So whatever's the same just cancels out, and that makes it a little bit easier. So now, showing you guys just what we have left, uh, t times 1, I know is just t. Over here on the other side, or that next one, 3t's had canceled out, so I was left with 4 is equal to, and then I have 3 times 7, which we know is 21. So, um, you know, I've got this linear equation. All I have to do now to finish this is add 4 to both sides. And I'm left with t is equal to 25. So, very, very similar to what we did with numbers. Just don't be thrown off when we have variables in that. Just the, And really, kind of the easy thing about the variables is I'm looking for the one that includes you know, like this right here, I'm looking for the one that includes the other denominators, if that helps, you know, so that's, like in this example, that included the 3 and the t, so that made that my common multiple. Okay, let me get these out of the way. All right, and the other thing we did in the, in last week's class was um, solving for literal equations. What I mean by that is we're, we're solving for a specific, a sp specified variable. So if given any type of equation, we're given some type of formula or, you know, and actually this is, for those of you guys who maybe had um, LPN math with me, we actually did this, um, but I actually did it for you when we were doing um, IV calculations. And I'll show you an example with that here in just a second. But what I mean by that, when we're given any type of equation, so just like letter A at the top of page 89. I'm looking at that next section in that chapter. Letter A says D equals RT. This is just simply a distance formula. The distance formula dis where it just says distance equals rate times time. Um, not that you obviously have to know the distance formula, but it's just showing you guys that when we have a certain formula, what if I wanted to solve for time? So maybe I was given 
the rate and the distance, could I then solve how long that took? Yes, absolutely. It's just a matter of just rearranging this equation a little bit. Think, when I have D equals R times T, but I want to get T by itself on one side of that equal sign, just like we do in all of our linear equations. Right now, T is being multiplied by R, so therefore, in order to get rid of that R, I'm going to have to divide by R and make sure I do it on both sides of the equal sign. What that's going to do is it's going to cancel it out over there on the right, leaving me with T, and then over here on the left, I'm just left with D over R. I obviously can't solve it any further because I don't know what D and R are. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds kind of funny. Um, what, you know, they are equal to. So in just rearranging that equation, that's all we've done. And that's all I'm going to ask you guys to do on these is just to take an equation and just rearrange it for a different variable. And that's what we did right there. Um, I won't give you guys any, like, letter C where we've got fractions in there, although super easy to go ahead and solve because it's very similar uh, to what we did where we would have to um, get rid of, you know, just different numbers, but I'm not going to do anything like that. Um, letter B, however, you might see something like that if I gave you guys letter B. I'm oh, sorry. Let me get this out of the way. Letter B says, um, let's see, 3x plus 2y is equal to 6, and it says to solve that for y, so meaning I want to get this by itself. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of the other parts over there on that left side of the equal sign. I have to get rid of the 3x and the 2. So I'm going to start by getting rid of the 3x since the 2 is directly attached to that y. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. I can't this right here, 3x is going to cancel out, leaving me with 2y. And then over here on the other side, I cannot combine 6 and 3x because they're unlike terms. So I'm just left with equals 3 minus, I mean, I'm sorry, 6 minus 3x, which again, if you said negative 3x plus 6, that's the exact same thing. So however you guys arrange that, in fact, this is what they did in the book, I believe. So either one is correct. But what we want to do now is we need to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And I'm left with y is equal to 6 minus 3x divided by 2. Or, again, if you're using this, y is equal to negative 3x plus 6 over 2 is the exact same thing. So either one of these is correct in this case. But all we've done is just rearranged it. We're not having to solve it. Again, I can't in this case because I don't know, I don't really know what um, what x is equal to. And actually, this one, I'm looking at this now, and I need to solve that a little bit further. I forgot you can combine the 6 and the 2. Um, what happens here is you can combine that 6 and the 2. Uh, since they are like terms, I can divide those. Uh, 3x into 3 and 2 would just be a fraction. So I can distribute that 2 to both sides of that top part there. Um, let me actually just get this out of the way so we can see this a little bit better. We're left with now y is equal to, um, what did we say, negative 3x. <laughs> I erased it, and then I forgot what it said. Three, negative 3x plus 6 over 2. Yes, dividing by 2, I can do that here. Um, negative 3x divided by 2 would just be, we would just call that... Sorry, my y's look like x's. Erase that there. Um, we have y is equal to, we would just call that negative 3 over 2x, just in combining that right there, since 3 can't be divided by 2. If it was something that I could divide by 2, like a 8 or a 10 or something, then I could reduce that a little bit further. But we'll just call that that fraction for now. And then plus 6 over 2, I know 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we can reduce that a little bit further. Let me do another example in the back of the book to show you guys um, some more literal equations where we're just rearranging it for a different variable. Um, let's see, just so just to do one like um, the one we just did, how about number 73? I don't remember which one we did in the in class. I think we did 74. 
Either way, 73, let's take a look at that one. So 73 says this. It says 7x minus 2y equals 5. And it says to solve this for y. So when I'm solving this for y, idea is to get y by itself. So I need to get rid of the 7x and the 2. So I'm going to start by removing 7x from both sides of my equal sign. And so I'll go ahead and do what? You know, 7x is eliminated here, leaving me with negative 2y. And then over on this side, I'm going to go ahead and put my variable first, just as that's kind of commonplace to go ahead and uh, write the variable term first. So I'm going to write that as negative 7x plus 5. So kind of like how they did in the first example. Again, if you do write 5 minus 7x, it's the exact same thing, and you'll be able to get the exact same answer at the end. Totally fine. It's a, it means the exact same thing. Um, but now I need to get rid of that negative 2, so I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides of our equation here. And that's going to eliminate the negative 2s there and leave me with y. And then over here on the other side, negative 7 over negative 2 is just going to, you know, negative divided by a negative we know would be positive, so that's just going to um, reduce to 7 over 2 x, because that's, again, part of that variable there, or that variable is part of that number there, plus the other side says 5 over negative 2, well, again, those aren't going to reduce. 5 and 2 can't be divided by the same thing. So instead, since it's positive divided by a negative, I was a little preemptive in writing that plus sign. Because it's a positive divided by a negative, so it's going to end up being negative or minus 5 over 2. So those are just, now, I think I had mentioned in class, if you did reduce those, 7 over 2, 7 divided by 2 gives you a decimal or a fraction. If you choose to reduce that, I'm not going to mark you wrong. I mean, if you, if you reduce that to a decimal or to, and then called that, that decimal, 7 over 2, for instance, is 3 and a half. Um, so if you called that 3.5x or 3 and a half x, I mean, that's, that's okay too. Um, but I just know in the book, when we've gone through these different examples, um, as I'm looking now at the example they have for, wait a minute, what did that just do? Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I said that I was doing number 73. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I did number 76. I'm sure you guys are going through this problem going, this is not number 73. It's just the very next one. So it's, it's still correct. Um, I'm just now looking at 73 going, that's not the answer, but that's because I wrote down 76, having a complete brain fart at the very beginning, just not paying attention. So this is actually number 76, guys. My apologies. Um, but as you guys are looking at 76, that is how it started, 7x minus 2y equals 5, and that is exactly the answer they have here, that it comes out to be 7 over 2x minus 5 over 2. So that's how they have it. They don't, they don't reduce those fraction terms any further, so you can just go ahead and leave it at that. Again, if it is something that can be reduced, like if they end there, if, if instead, of, instead of 5, if it was, say, 10, like if this, I mean, not, yeah, if it was 10, maybe an even number, so given you just a what-if scenario here, drawing in green, if that was 10, then yes, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So we would the end of that answer would say minus 5. Um, but if it comes out to be those fractions that can't be reduced, then you can just leave them as is. So if, just going ahead and doing number 73 now, just to show you guys, because that's what's going to end up happening here. Number 73 is 7x plus 2y equals 8. <laughs> plus 2y and 8. That's the difference between 73 and 76. Um, okay, so what we would do here, again, just like we did on number 76, we're solving for y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, you know, that, that 2y by itself first by subtracting 7x from both sides. That's going to, you know, cancel out those 7s and leave me with 2y on that left side. And then I'm going to have negative 7x plus 8 over on the right side. Now I need to get rid of that 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides of my equal sign. Cancels out the 2's over there. Uh, over on the right side, I have negative 7x divided by 2. It's a negative divided by a positive, so, it's, so it remains a negative. So I'm going to be left with y is equal to negative 7 over 2x. Plus, since 8 and 2 can be reduced, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So it's plus 4. So our answer... And looking at that one, yes, the answer there gives us negative 7 over 2x plus 
four. So that is correct. And that's the last thing we took a look at there, just solving for those rational, I mean, not solving, solving for those literal, literal equations. If given an equation and we need to solve that for another variable, we simply just solve it the way we always solve linear equations, but we can't completely solve it, so we just leave it as that um, in that equation form. Um, so if you guys have any questions as you guys are doing your homework this week, or this weekend, and you run into maybe some other problems, I know sometimes that Alex... Uh, assignment goes a little bit more in depth than we go over in the in the book. Um, so if there are specific questions that you have from the Alex homework or um, just in looking at some examples and you want to know if we're going to have that on the quiz or if you just want to know how to solve it, I'd be glad to put something together and show you how to solve it. So just let me know if you guys run into any questions. All right, thanks.